Hey guys, Amazing Tech here. So this is the Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. You can check out my unboxing video by clicking that notification above. It's been a few days since I got this phone. I've been using this as my primary phone since then. And this is my review. This is truly a flagship phone in terms of everything you can expect from a flagship phone. The build quality is great. It's a big phone with a great display. The price starts at $1200, which is 200 less than last year's S20 Ultra 5G. The display is 6.8 inches and it's very comfortable to hold and feels great in your hands. That's because of its curved edges and also it's a bit narrower compared to Apple's iPhone 12 Pro Max. There are some major changes to the design. First, the camera module has gone through some meaningful changes and they look better than the previous version of S series. Now the module just curve into the main body to become one. The color of this phone is phantom black, which Samsung has specially created for this phone. It's a great matte black phone. It won't get your fingerprint on it. That's what I like most about this color. The back of the phone is protected with Gorilla Victus glass. Samsung says it's nearly unbreakable. The display is the best on any smartphone, period. There is no comparison to this display. It's a 6.8 inches AMOLED display with an adaptive 120 Hz refresh rate. It's also brighter with 50% more contrast. The display can emit up to 1500 nits of brightness in HDR videos. On the inside, the Galaxy S21 series is the first smartphone to bring Snapdragon to play chip. This processor has really helped Samsung to process images better and add variable refresh rate from 10 Hz to 120 Hz. The phone is very fast. I experienced no lag any time during my time with it. The phone also has a 5000 mAh battery. It should last more than a day. Some cost cutting will surely infuriate the fans. The most loved micro SD slot is gone, so you might want to go for a 256 GB version instead of 128 GB version. It's not that expensive, an additional $50 will help. There is no charger in the box as Samsung has decided to take Apple's example. Also there is no earphones packed this time around. Phone that makes you want to capture 108 MP pictures and 8K videos, losing your micro SD card slot is a big letdown. Samsung has also added S Pen support, but the S Pen is sold separately and there is no place to hold it, but you may be able to buy a cover with a S Pen holder. The fingerprint sensor is a tad bigger this time around. You don't need to really aim at the sensor to unlock your phone. And of course, now I don't need to worry about removing my mask to unlock my phone. Samsung calls this phone Ultra because of many things. It's because of its large size, great display and build. But primarily, the Ultra belongs to its camera system. It's amazing how Samsung stacks up megapixels and zoom. but ends up with a mediocre performance. S20 Ultra suffered from major focusing issues and Samsung tried to fix them, but they are nowhere near to completely fixing them. Samsung says they have made a lot of improvements and S21 Ultra has an improved laser focus, which seem to have fixed those issues effectively. This is redemption time for Samsung camera system. I wouldn't mind saying that these cameras are an all-rounder system which is superior to iPhone 12 Pro Max in many cases and at par with many other use cases too. This phone also does great on videography with great dynamic range and improved image stabilization. 8K video is still a unique offering in S21 Ultra, but I miss the micro SD slot. I prefer 4K videos, which is more practical, but night mode imaging still belongs to iPhone 12 Pro Max. But S20 Ultra is not far behind. Samsung is reaching there fast. It has a 108 megapixel main sensor with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and two telephoto lenses with 10 megapixel each, which is capable of going from 3x to 10x zoom.
Based on my testing, all the issues that I have faced with S20 Ultra has been resolved and I'm very happy with what Samsung has done with this camera system. If you look at the zoom lens, that's where the magic happens. Though it still has a 100x zoom, it doesn't as usual make any sense. But the 10x is the best that I have seen on any phones. 30x zoom is reasonably legible, but nothing beyond. Camera app is nothing that you can see on any other phones. Samsung has added a new mode called Director's View, which gives you freedom to switch between your lenses while shooting videos at 1080p. You can choose between multiple modes from the camera frame without going into settings. Though there are plenty of options in there, it's just overwhelming at first, but you will start appreciating those when you start using camera more often. Coming to software, Samsung S21 Ultra comes with one UI 3.1 out of the box. Though it has improved over the years, Samsung has cramped so many functionalities into it that you may not use. It may be a good thing to remove those hardly used features and make the software a bit clean and light. I would love to see a lightweight software I can quickly locate different settings. Samsung is even allowing an option to choose between free and Google Discover. But in the US, they still force their text messaging app instead of Google's messaging app. Hopefully that comes too soon. The One UI 3.1 has lots of shortcuts when you swipe down the notification bar. There are too many. It would have been better if it was limited to the most used shortcuts, but you can always customize to have only those you might want to use very frequently. It is still good for one-handed use. The multiple app support in a single screen is very useful if you are someone who prefer to read news and chat with someone at the same time. Picture-in-picture -picture support for YouTube or Maps or even WhatsApp are something you don't find on iPhone. I would just love to see iPhone getting those features in the next few years. So Samsung has delivered a phone that can be called Ultra with an excellent camera module which performs and faster processor. Though some of the popular functionalities are traded off to cut cost, this is still $200 cheaper than its predecessor. If you are looking to upgrade from your S10 or any other older phone, this might be it. With additional S1 support, you don't need to wait for Note series to arrive later this fall. Who knows, if rumors are to be believed, Samsung might cancel Note series completely. So this phone lives up to its name and its value for money, according to me. The best display on a smartphone, a great camera system that leads the pack, with a faster processor and S Pen support, and everything else makes this a flagship phone and worth its name. Ultra. Thanks for watching.